Tonight on the MTN News, shots fired at a house in Billings. Was it retaliation for a weekend shooting that injured an 11 year old girl? You kind of feel helpless because what can you do? Also an urgent call for motorists to put down the phone and pay attention. It's a loud bang and a crash and you know, everybody turns their heads to see what happened and we've had to assist in some of the accidents that have happened. Distracted drivers creating dangers in an interstate construction zone and a new app that makes exploring the Yellowstone River easy, even from the comfort of your couch. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. We'll get to those stories in a moment, but we begin in Hardin, where a fire claimed the life of a young boy this morning. It's still under investigation tonight. Our David J. traveled to Hardin and has the latest. Jennifer White Bear and her family now staying at a hotel in Hardin. Family, friends, crew tribal members bringing by food and clothing, other supplies and support. And we did have a chance to talk with Jennifer for just a few minutes. The Crow Tribe owns the Western Motel and has a place for the family. Many came by to offer meals, condolences, and more for the grieving grandmother. Thank you for everybody that donated. Everybody's coming together and bringing donations, uh, money, um, just food and clothing because they pretty much lost everything. The fire started in the early morning at White Bear's home at 8th Street West and North Custer Avenue. My grandson Chubby, he ran through the house telling everybody that there was a smoke in the house and there was fire and I ran down the steps from my room and I could see the the um, red flames outside the window and I opened the door and it came in so fast it was like someone hit me real hard and knocked me down. Jennifer tried to go back to rescue her grandson Chubby but couldn't get to him. I couldn't go up the steps because the flames were already engulfed in the in the steps and it was uh, the smoke, it was black, black smoke. Jennifer was overcome with emotion so we could not confirm Chubby's age, but others tell us he was between six and ten years old. Beautiful child. Candy LaFrance Felicia has been friends with Jennifer for more than 25 years. She's an incredible mother, she's an incredible grandmother, she's involved, she's all about um, taking care of her own. The Bighorn County Sheriff says the investigation is ongoing and a cause has not been determined. Meanwhile, a GoFundMe page has been set up for the family. If everybody could find it in their hearts to contribute to Jennifer and her grandchildren. Lots of prayers um, and just being here for each other. In Hardin, David J, MTN News. Another Billings neighborhood is on edge tonight after yet another home is shot up in a drive-by shooting. According to police, several bullets were fired into a home on the 200th block of North 20th Street right around 2 this morning. Happened on the heels of a weekend shooting Saturday night where an 11 year old girl was struck while sleeping in her home. Many are now wondering whether the shootings are connected. Our Charlie Kleps has been looking into that. It's scary. It's scary because you don't know who's in the house. Life isn't precious anymore. They just take it. Few people know what it's like to dodge bullets inside their own home. But one family who lives on the 200th block of North 20th Street is an exception. It scares me to death. What's going to happen next? Are they going to go to the back of the house? Are they going to kick my front door in? The homeowner who asked to remain anonymous fears not only for her safety, but for the 10 kids who live there after several rounds were fired into the home early Monday morning. To be honest, angry. I'm really angry. I mean, I'm upset, but I'm more angry than anything. Like I said, anyone could have been killed. A close call and on the heels of another incident just over a mile away. On Saturday, an 11 year old girl was shot while asleep in her home when a barrage of bullets hit the back of her house. Another reckless act and one she believes was committed by teens. Young children that are 17 and 16 years old get into trouble and they come back and they do stuff to the house. And me and my husband don't have anything to do with it. 
None of it. We go to work, we come home, and that's it. What we're seeing a lot more of is young people d committing violent acts. And when I mean young, I'm talking, I've seen them as young as 13, 14, 15 years old using firearms in violent ways. Yellowstone County Attorney Scott Twido has seen the rise in teen violence in Billings. I want to have, again, tools available, that is, laws that I can use to prosecute folks that do these terrible things in our community. That's why he helped Representative Bill Mercer put together a bill this past legislative session that would have made adjustments to the current Montana Youth Court Act to make it easier to prosecute juveniles, but it ultimately was defeated. What just kills me is we need more tools to deal with the worst of the worst, not fewer. We need to bring our Youth Court Act into compliance with the realities of what we're facing in our communities. Changes that could potentially play a massive role in cases just like this one. I don't understand why people keep doing this. These are children that are doing this. I did speak with a police officer on scene early Monday and asked if there was a connection to the shooting that happened just a few blocks away over the weekend involving an 11 year old girl who was hit by a bullet that came through her bedroom wall. That officer told me there's likely a connection, but that Billings police are still investigating. In South Billings, I'm Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Lori Vello Daybell, the so-called doomsday mom convicted of killing her two children in Idaho over bizarre claims that they were zombies, learned her sentence today. A mother killed her own children, and you simply have no remorse for it. Daybell stared straight ahead as an Idaho judge imposed the maximum sentence allowed life in prison with no possibility of parole. Daybell had been convicted of murdering her two children, 16-year-old Tylee and 7-year-old JJ, and conspiring to kill Tammy Daybell before marrying Tammy's husband, Chad. Officials are releasing more information about a deadly grizzly bear attack on a trail in West Yellowstone. 48-year-old Amy Adamson was running on Buttermilk Trail on July 22nd when she was mauled by a grizzly. That trail remains closed, but traps have now been removed from the area because it's not believed that the bear is lingering in the area. Wildlife biologist Randy Scarlett says the initial investigation shows that it was a surprise encounter with the bear likely defending her cubs. He says it's always important to be bear aware when hiking. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Things pretty quiet on the Stockman Bank weather cam for us here in Billings this evening with 94 at the airport for the warmest reading. We were just a little above average first thing in the day and well regionally we've got some shower and thunderstorm activity this afternoon was mainly about the hot temperatures. Check out readings that were well into the 90s. 96 today for Missoula. 97 for you in Miles City. 92 in um, Sheridan for the warmest reading. Cody you made it up to 88 but the clouds and the storm started to move in. 90 3 Warland 91 in Livingston. They, as far as air quality goes, we're starting to have some issues in western Montana with the fires that are developing there, and some of that smoke will start to move our way. Lots of weather to talk about in a few minutes. If you've driven I-90 west of Billings recently, you're probably familiar with this huge construction project, and it's also on the radar for first responders, as there have been over 20 accidents on I-90 between Billings and Laurel since the project started back in April. And the majority of these accidents have one important thing in common. Head west on I-90 from Billings, and there's no avoiding it. 30,000 cars make their way through this construction zone between Billings and Laurel every day. And with all that traffic have come traffic troubles. There's been quite a few different types of accidents on this project. Anywhere from guardrail hits, uh, our traffic control on a daily basis, and uh, of course, you know, the rear ending or uh, vehicle collisions. According to Montana Highway Patrol, over 20 accidents have occurred on this nine mile long stretch of highway just since April, with the majority of them caused by, you guessed it, distracted drivers. 20 accidents for the amount of traffic coming through doesn't seem that high, but to me that's way too high. Most cases it's going to be the use of a cell phone. They're either texting or reading an email coming through the project. So many accidents have occurred here that the Montana Department of Transportation is now taking action, publicizing the numbers on electronic billboards. I love those signs. And urging drivers to put down their phones. It's a pretty direct message and to 
give a status of where we're sitting with accidents. Those dangers are also why there's a concrete barrier separating drivers and construction workers on the highway so that they're protected. Well, there's close calls. We've had accidents that have happened right on the other side of the concrete barrier rail. You know, it's a loud bang and a crash and, you know, everybody turns their heads to see what happened and we've had to assist in some of the accidents that have happened. Kimberly Guy commutes from Laurel to Billings every day and has seen several of those close calls firsthand. There was an accident just the other day on my way home from work, I saw, so can make it much longer commute. It's not only a concern for our workers, it's also a concern for the traveling public because it's your family and everybody else's families that are driving through too. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Two pipeline companies have agreed to pay more than $12 million in penalties after oil spills in eastern Montana and North Dakota. One of those spills happening in 2015 when Bridger Pipeline's Poplar Pipeline ruptured over the Yellowstone River near Glendive. The pipeline failed after being exposed to river scour. The other pipeline, owned by Bell Fouche, ruptured in 2016 in Billings County, North Dakota, and spilled into a tributary that feeds the Little Missouri River. A spokesman for the EPA says the settlement holds the two companies accountable for their significant oil spills and requires them to take meaningful measures to prevent future spills. Tourism is taking off in southeastern Montana, and a new mural is trying to catch even more visitors right as they step foot in the state. MTN's Jackie Coffin takes us to Billings' expanding airport where big ideas are coming together in a colorful piece of art. A part of this mural that's sure to stop visitors is, of course, the big T-Rex. And if you line your feet up here on the dino selfie spot, you're sure to get an epic picture thanks to Southeast Montana. Glacier and Yellowstone may pull big crowds, but there's an increasing number of tourists exploring another part of the state. It's different than what the rest of Montana has, and that's what I love about it. Whether it's dinosaurs or cowboys, steep canyons or starry skies, Visit Southeast Montana says there's a lot to see from Billings to the state border. And now you can get a glimpse of it at the Billings Logan Airport. This installation is a really, really exciting time for us, both to welcome home our Billings residents and our Southeast Montana regional folks, and also to welcome the 400,000 people that walk through this airport through Billings Logan International every year. The photo mural is part of the airport's $60 million expansion. And airport director Jeff Roach says air traffic and deals are picking up, another sign of a building tourism economy. We are seeing additional seats available through the summer. Uh, we're working with the existing airlines to maintain or increase the number of uh, seats available on the existing flights, but we're also looking at new flight opportunities to new destinations. Enticing guests to head east, Brenda Moss has a strategy. We're doing more of these projects that we call destination development. It's something like the Dinosaur Trail is a great example. We connect a common theme and help direct and, ins well, first inspire the visitor, but also direct them from point A to point B to the next one. Itineraries and travel ideas mapped out on the mural, the showcasing canyon, images from from Eastern Montana photographers. Photographed by me. Driving tourism to a unique part of the state can start right at the airport. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Ahead on the MTN News at 10 here on Q2, exploring the Yellowstone. A new app about to make it a lot easier, even if you don't plan to leave your house. And later, Montana kids getting a chance to polish their soccer skills with the pros. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.